Our next example in modern physics is again the photoelectric effect, but here the question is a little bit different. Here they want to know the wavelength of the incoming photon required in order to set an electron free in this particular metal. In this case, we're dealing with nickel, and so the work function for nickel is 5.1 electron volts, which means that the energy imparted on the electron must be at least 5.1 electron volts for it to jump free. Any additional energy that it receives will be used for the kinetic energy of the electron as it flies away from the metal. All right, so we're looking for the wavelength. So again, we use the equation that the kinetic energy imparted on the electron is equal to the incoming energy of the photon, energy of the photon, minus the energy required to overcome the work function. And in the case where we just want barely enough to overcome the work function and zero energy is given to the uh, electron for it to go away, fly away, we just simply set kinetic energy equal to zero, that's equal to the energy of the photon uh, minus the work function. So then if we put the work function on the other side, we have the work function equals the energy of the photon or... Um, well, actually, yeah, we can go ahead and, and solve it like that because then what we're going to do is we're going to equate the energy of the photon to the wavelength. So the energy of the photon is equal to Planck's constant times um, the frequency of the photon, which can be written as hc over lambda. So then let's replace that over here so we can have the work function is equal to hc over lambda lambda and then we interchange lambda and the work function so lambda is equal to hc over the work function and now all we have to do is plug in what those are the Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the um, <coughs> to the minus 34 joules times seconds speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8 times 10 I'm getting a little ahead of myself here times 10 to the 8 meters per second and take the whole thing and divide it by the work function. Now the work function was given to us in electron volts, 5.1 electron volts. And of course, if you want to convert that to joules, which we have to, otherwise we don't match up with these units up here, uh, that would be equal to uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules per one electron volt. So the electron volts cancel out. All right. Now, with my calculator, I will figure out what that is equal to, 6.626e to the 34 minus times 3e to the 8, and divide the whole thing by 5.1, and then the conversion to, to joules, 1 point, ooh, that's a little too fast, 6.626e to the 34 minus times 3e to the 8, divided by 5.1, and then divided by 1.6e to the 19 minus, and what do we get? We get this should be equal to 2.436 times 10 to the minus 7, and that would be meters. Okay, now to make it have a little bit more sense, let's convert it to nanometers. And in nanometers, that would be equal to 243.6 nanometers. All right, and just to give that a little bit more understanding, Realizing that for visible light, the wavelength varies anywhere from um, 400 nanometers for purple light to 700 nanometers for visible light, you can see that this does not fall within the range of visible light. Actually, this falls within the range of ultraviolet light, which means for electrons to be jumping free out of uh, nickel, it has to be struck by light in the ultraviolet range. And for this particular case, we can see that the minimum wavelength or the maximum length of the wave can be 243.6 nanometers or below that for they have enough energy to sell electron free. And that's how you do that.